Chapter 1 The 31st of August, 1888 In the dark streets of London's Whitechapel district in 1888, all sorts of foul humans lived. Some preyed on the weak, others took advantage of those in their sleep. Some drank themselves asunder, while others enjoyed the pleasures of one another. One may see these acts as heinous or deviant, but even greater depraved acts were committed. Prostitutes were about like locusts in the streets throughout both the day and night, most looking for their next target to make ends meet. You see, in the poor district of Whitechapel, nearly everyone was struggling, especially the single women to find work. However, none of them were expecting that while they looked for their next target, someone, or something, was also searching for those that caught their eye. Hey, Polly, any luck tonight? Not much, love. I haven't really had much of any luck outside of this bottle. You? Polly asked her, while taking a swig of what most there would call rat piss. This was the local name for the liquor that was the cheapest one could get their hands on. The stuff the shopkeepers would keep on the bottom shelf where the rat scurried. Well, I had this one bloke. He paid decently enough, but his cork knackered me right out. I should have charged him more for what he gave me. That good, eh? Sounds like something I could get behind. You've always been a bit more flexible than me. <laughs> I better head on inside, though. Gotta get some rest. This poor old back of mine won't make it through tomorrow at this rate. I hear you. You don't happen to have the time before you head off, do you? Well, let's see. I did get a timepiece from a gentleman earlier this week. Looks to be about 2.50am. Still early enough that there might be a few customers around for you to cater to. All right, love. I won't keep you any longer. Take care and have a good night. Not too long after the woman waved her off, a few gentlemen on the dark road passed her by. None of them seemed too interested in what she had to offer them, and a few of them even snickered and were heard commenting about the woman's weight. Bugger off then, will ya? These damn blokes. I'll never get anywhere at this rate. One man finally approached from around the corner, wearing a top hat and a dark civil suit. He paused for a moment, giving her a nice smile, but then he began to walk off. She caught him by the arm right as he was about to pass. Hey there, darling. Can I interest you in a fun night? Sorry, dear. Afraid I wasn't dreaming. I lost all my shilling gambling tonight. Shame, because I could use a bit of distraction after that disappointment. Perhaps another time. That's not a worry. Not a worry at all. What's your name, darling? She asked, looking up at him blinking. Her large voluptuous bosom pressed firmly against his arm. It's Robert. And you are? Most around here call me Polly. The words and feeling of her warm soft skin and hot breath sparked something in the man's loins that made him want to join her even more than before. There are other ways that we can settle, if you'd like to join me tonight. I'd be very interested to know. It's really simple. You see, all you have to do is... As she pulled him inside the nearby gate to her flat's building, he smiled with a wide, giddy expression, like a kid who had experienced the taste of a chocolate truffle for the very first time. He was about to whisper something back, but was quickly interrupted before he had the chance to begin. Marianne? Oh, Marianne? <laughs> Who's out there? Leave now and forget, my human friend. For it is I, Jack, who has stopped you from committing a cardinal sin. As Robert pulled his arm away firmly and walked away as if in a trance, the woman tried to scream out his name, but when she tried to scream out, not even an audible whisper was heard from her lips. Why don't you come with me tonight, Marianne? All this time you owe has come due. 
Oh, what a treat it must have been for you! To do what you have done all these years, only thinking of yourself is how it appears. It's all upsetting to the natural order, little Mary. You knew this, yet still, you did it! Oh, for what a travesty, Mary, that this carries with it. You hurt me, Marianne, I must admit. You hurt me, and you've hurt so many others in the figurative and literal senses of the word. Just why, Marianne? Oh, why? Why have you been doing it all this time? Won't you come here? Marianne? Won't you come to see me? Why do you divert your eyes so? Does the thought of what's coming frighten you for what you owe? Does the sight of my face send shivers down your spine? Will you not look upon me, O oh Marianne of mine? I... Uh, well, I... Oh, Marianne, you know you've been bad. The price you've asked for has come back to be had. For you, due to what the boss man asked you to do. You can blame no one else but yourself, that is true. You were told not to continue down this path of sacrilege, and yet it was done. But fear not, my poor Marianne. I'm here to put it to an end, so try not to run. The girl's mouth in front of him opened wide. She tried to scream, but this time, only a harsh breath exerted from her mouth. I'll make it quick, but painless I cannot promise to you. I'll start at your throat, and no more devious words shall be spoken by you. Your soul may be lost, but you knew this already. Before I even beseech you today, you knew the consequences, so get ready. For Marianne, the devil's contract hurts both the seeker and the conscriptor that makes it to be true. So ready yourself, Miss Mary. For your own time is now due. Once they reached her, their long, slick fingers ran across the nape to her bosom. Chills were sent down her spine, causing her to shiver. The woman looked up at him with absolute terror and tears in her eyes that begged for mercy. Sensing the patient hand of death now rapidly approaching, the violent monstrous man looked down upon her with no pity. His round head and fiery eyes only cast a dark shadow upon the woman's round body. At last, she found the will to fight back. <sighs> Struggling with all her might, she punched and kicked the presence in front of her. It was no use. She was repelled with limited force. Her flabby body grabbed like a child and tossed against the nearby fence's wall. Where she was pinned, he squeezed both of her hands with one large intrusive grasp while slapping her face with the other. Blood gushed from her mouth. He put one finger to her lips while letting out a heated smile that warmed her beaten face. Gently, with the lover's touch, he tapped and slid his finger down from one side of her mouth to the other, four times like a taunting metronome. We must be quiet. Can't alert the nearby watchmen. He smiled one last time as tears and fluids escaped the woman's body. Her final distorted breath quickly exited from a quick flick of the wrist. Blood followed that last breath as it came rushing from her neck. The wound was so deep that it went almost all the way through, just short of the spine. The corpse of the woman dropped to the ground as a deep scarlet blood continued to spew out. It looked like some sort of twisted champagne bottle that continued to fizz over. You see, that wasn't so bad. No more wicked words are heard coming from you when you're nearly behead. Your soul will soon be destroyed. And what's more, I'll disembowel you all the way through, you meaty whore.
By making a small incision in her stomach, he reached in deep, pulling out what he could. His smiling face created a soft luminance as he tore away at her flesh and innards. Marianne's intestines and uterus were ripped from her body and tossed to the nearby building's <laughs> stone floor. Laughing at her lifeless corpse, he stood up and walked away. Marianne Nichols' body now laid there alone, silently, in a puddle of her own blood, guts, and teeth at the inner gate. One of the miscreant whores of Whitechapel were now added to the Ripper's death list in a blood-red ink. It wasn't the first name, and it wouldn't be the last. Jack's devilish games were just beginning, and soon his games would force the devil himself to come to collect.